All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Video Games. We are back with another cool little video we thought we'd shoot for you. We've been working on this uh, pair of Daytona USA arcade games. This game came out in, I believe, 1993, maybe 94. Yeah, 94, it says it on the screen. It came out in 1994, and whenever it came out, it was just one of the coolest games ever. So we actually thought we'd shoot a couple of videos of it. What, I'd, what I'm going to show you today is how the... Uh, how complex the uh, the electronics were in it, the the uh, game boards. So this game just uh, was way over the top, had a lot of stuff going on. So I'm going to show you how they accomplished all that. This is their twin cabinet, they called it, because there's two games, obviously. It's a very heavy duty metal cabinet. All right, and of course you sit on it and play it. You got the brake pedal and gas pedal down there. You've got the uh, coin box in the middle that connects to both games, right? You can play one side or the other, and uh, you can play two people at the same time. So where they put the, in the back part of the cabinet, let me walk around to this other side, you can see it a little better. In the back part of the cabinet, you have the monitor, which you can actually see how it's kind of sitting in there. And of course, these were the big tube style CRT monitors. And so up in here, that's about all you've got. You've got the, the monitor tube and the uh, monitor board underneath it. So you have the control panel. So you've got the controls and the shifter. And there's a big motor behind the, uh, the uh, steering wheel because it had force feedback, or forced feedback, some places call it. And so what that left them was, where they put all of the electronics was down underneath the seat. So that's a metal case that the seat sits on. These are very heavy machines. These weigh about, man, it's something crazy, like 450 pounds each side, something like that, maybe even more than that. Um, and I'm not exaggerating. You can look it up on the uh, flyer. It tells you what the, the total weight of both pieces are. But So the way, if you had to work on these, the way you accessed it was on the side here, there were some screws that held on some of the trim, but you see that key and that lock right there, of course the key wouldn't be hanging in it, but you would take that, you put that key in there and turn it on each side. There's one on each side. I've already unlocked that. And when you did, you could pull the seat back. And voila, you are in the game. So you have a cage there. There's several game boards inside of that. You've got a subwoofer in the uh, seat that you can actually feel rumble while you play. And then down here, of course, there's the foot controls. And you've got this tow board. So if you take this tow board up, well, I can do it with one hand, and take that off. Underneath the tow board, that's actually a piece of plexiglass. The reason they put that in there was so that if you dripped a drink or you dropped a drink down on the tow board, instead of it frying, thousands of dollars worth of expensive electronics it would land on that uh, piece of plexiglass instead so that's how they unlock so what I did was on this side I went ahead and removed all the cages and covers and everything so that you could see all of the game boards so there are ten I believe ten we'll count I believe there's 10 different boards that make a Daytona work. And these are working, as you can see. We've got everything up and doing what it's supposed to do. They really wanted these games to be uh, have a lot going on, so they came up with a really cool design, but it's really complex. So we'll go through all the boards and I'll just show you how they made it all work. So in this cage, there was a metal plate that went over it. I removed that. And you see this fan here. We put a new fan in it keep the board cool. What it's uh, sucking air off of, and it's sucking it off, it's the, the air is going that way, so it's basically taking hot air off of the board. Instead of blowing onto the board, it's pulling the air off of the board. There's some RAM chips under there um, that tend to act up. So basically, this is the main board that tells everything what to do. So this top board here, this is a four PCB stacked. You can see it right there. See how there's four boards stacked on top of each other? 
This top board is the ROM board. I'm gonna go around on the other side because it'll you can read the labels and stuff. This top board is the ROM board, so that saves the software um, for the game. This was Sega's Model 2 system. So you've got the ROM board, and then un right underneath that, you've got another board the same size that's connected to it with those connectors. That's called the communication board. So you see it connects to the front of this, and then you have these two cables here that connect in. Those are optic uh, connections, uh, toslink, they call that. And those cables run down the side of the machine, out the back. You connect them into the cables running off of this side, and it allows the two games to talk to each other, and that's how they were able to link them together. You could link up to eight uh, machines together, so you could race eight people. <laughs> it's really cool, you know? So, top board there is the ROM board, which holds the software. The board under it is the communication board. This, main, this board here with the LEDs on it, it runs underneath the other two boards. You can see that it goes the length of the stack there. That's the CPU board, so that's basically the brains of it, you know. And uh, it's Sega's Model 2 CPU board. You can see that on that label right there. Daytona Twin. Okay, and then underneath the CPU board is yet another board. That's called the Video PCB. It was called, it was the three, Sega's 3D Video PCB. And that's how they were able to do the you know, all of the shading on the cars and the, you know, the, the 3D polygon uh, cars that was just so, you know, cutting edge at the time. <laughs> now you look at it and it's like, eh, what's the big deal? But back then, this was, there was nothing even close to looking like this whenever this came out. All right. So this stack here, there's four boards and they, they screw down and they, they go into this little uh, filter board on the front which just has connectors connecting to it, little wire, little connectors with a lot of wiring. Okay, so inside this same cage, you've got another board back here. This is the fifth board in the cage, so this is Sega's in-out board. And uh, they had actually used this before. If you look, it's got a 1992 copyright on it. This in-out board they had used on like Virtual Fighter and some of their other stuff, you know. So uh, it basically interfaces all of the, like the controls and things like that, like the shifter and everything, with the main CPU board. And you've got all kinds of wiring to make that happen. So that's five boards, and then of course, the wires come over to the edge of the cage, connect there, and then on the same, on the PCB on the outside of the cage, the wires go to the rest of the game. Very complex. This, these games, whenever they came out, were like ten thousand dollars each side, eight thousand dollars each side, something like that. Um, very expensive, very complex because they were top of the line, state of the art, whenever it came out. And so right here, this is where the tow board goes, and I've removed it on this side and took the uh, the piece of plexiglass off so that we can get down there into it and see the different boards. So underneath your actual feet while you're playing, you've got. This is the power supply. That's just a standard power supply that you can, you know, it's in a lot of different games. Behind it back there, you may not be able to see, but there's a transformer, which basically converts uh, voltages to other voltages. Usually, usually transformers do AC voltages, and then the power supply turns 120 volt AC into five volt, 12 volt, negative five volt, usually, um, for all of the little PCBs to use. So way back here, and here in the middle, you've got a line of fuses. Way back here in the back, you've got the sound board. So there's a sound board you can't really see. It's probably too dark, but you've got a main sound board, which did like background uh, music. Um, we had another video here where we showed all of the different background music, some of the sound effects and stuff. That main board there with the red LED on it, or two red LEDs on it. Uh, handles the sound, one of them just turned green. And then on top of that, you've got a little tiny board which seems to me to handle the uh, speech. Um, because we had one that was uh, acting up and garbled and whenever I swapped that board with a one off of a parts game, it, uh, it fixed it. So it seems like the, the main board does the background sounds and some of the sound effects and then some of the other sound effects and all of the speech, uh, like the voice recording, uh, are actually handled by that little board on the top. So then here in front of it, that's the sound amplifier, right? <laughs> and 
And then in front of that, you've got the mixing board for the, for the uh, sound system. Because you had two nice speakers. If you look at the monitor on each side, there's a little grill. And that little grill has a speaker behind it. They made a plastic uh, kind of encasement that kind of routed the sound out that grill. And the, the, uh, the actual speaker itself is back behind the monitor. And then you've got another one on the left side. So you've got a left one, a right one, and then of course the subwoofer in the seat. So this mixing board here kind of makes that happen. So we've had five boards in the main cage. There's two sound boards, that's seven. A sound amp, that's eight. A sound mixing board. And then the tenth and final board is this one here. This is the, uh, the driving board, or basically the forced feedback board. As you can see, there's a number on it. It's kind of hard to read. Right now it says, it's trying to say 80. Maybe it's bouncing back and forth between 80 and 79. On the back of the steering, there are two potentiometers, like two big gears. One of them tells the CPU board through the in-out board where the steering wheel is located. So if you turn it to the left, the gear, one of the gears turns to the left, and then it tells the in-out board and the CPU board, hey, the steering wheel just turned to the left. And so, you know, it makes the car move to the left on the game. Well. The motor that runs the feedback also has an input. So there's another gear behind the steering wheel that goes down to this little board. Um, and then this little board, when it's on 80, it's centered. So what this board does is it basically tries to keep the wheel back at 80. So if you move it to 75 or whatever, I don't know what the cutoff is, maybe it's just one or two points. But Whenever you move the board too far, whenever you move the steering wheel too far to the left and make, move that gear too far to the left, this board kicks in and tells the motor to pull the steering wheel back to the right and vice versa. So you can see it's saying 80 now. If I turn it to the left, it's turning the gear behind it. And now our number is 42. Turn it to the right up to D6 or whatever. So, lots of boards, very complex. I just thought I'd shoot a little video showing all the different stuff that's going on in one of these. And it, maybe it'll help explain to some people have always wondered, you know, why it takes so long to fix certain games. And we'll get some games and have them for months. We've had these games for months, but we haven't been working on them nonstop. But we've been working on them a little bit here and there. Well, this is why. There's just a ton of stuff going on. If you've got one little wire not making good contact or not doing what it's supposed to do. Or if you've got one of these little EEPROM chips, see all those little silver marks on the EEPROMs? Those are all legs on the chips. Most of these chips have like 40 legs, you know. And so they go in a little socket like this. That's an empty socket. And if one of those legs is corroded or dirty and isn't making a good connection with the socket, you get something that doesn't work right. You know, so it's just very time consuming on a game like this that's real complicated and it's got a lot going on. Um, it's also, there. there's no schematics for any of these game, for any of these uh, boards that are basically publicly available that I'm aware of at least. And even if there was, I probably wouldn't be able to understand them. There's just so much going on, the in-out board, four different boards in this stack, two different sound boards, a sound amp, a sound mixer, and a forced feedback steering board. Um, so if you've got a problem anywhere, you're going to end up with problems in the gameplay and it just, you know, it's not going to be right. So you, you had to go through and figure out what's not working right and then figure out what you need to fix. There is a gentleman uh, with a website called iRepairSega.com who fixes these boards because he used to work for Sega. So he's got access to the schematics and actually helped design some of the boards. I don't know about here on... Um, I don't know about here on Daytona, but uh, he was their tech guy for a while, and he really knows what he's doing. So if you if you do have one of these and you end up with a board that you think, if you can narrow it down and figure out you know where you think the problem is, if you mail that board to him, he'll repair it. He knows knows how to repair it. Does good work. Um, but there you go. Quick little video just showing you uh, some of the uh, focus is a problem here. Just showing you some of the uh, the uh, different game boards that make this awesome game work and uh
we'll shoot another video showing the uh, the actual gameplay you know like we usually do in an overview with a cabinet um, and when we do uh, I'll upload that video but subscribe to us here check out some of our other stuff and uh, we're going to be keep putting up classic arcade game videos a few video game videos whenever we get something in cool that we think people might want to see and uh, we've got a classic video game store here that we sell arcade games in and pinball machines and jukeboxes and things like that so we like to shoot videos of them. You can see all of our stuff that we have for sale right now at lionsarcade.com and uh, by the time you see this video these two Daytonas here may already be sold but maybe we'll have some more Daytonas in or maybe we'll have uh, something else that you're interested in or if not just enjoy the videos. We'll see you next time.